Hello, Clinic Review family. It's good to see you again. Welcome, especially to our members. You can see their names kind of ticking by there. And we're going to have a live stream once a month for our new our members. And also I'll do a, a lecture. I'll do five, like five NCLEX questions, and then I'll take any questions people have or that you send me ahead of time for just for our members. It's five dollars a month. And you also will get, if you're a member, you get ten dollars off of my next gen tutoring. You go to clinic reviews to see about my next gen tutoring. You would have to email me uh, to get the coupon code for that though, if you're a member. So it doesn't like automatically happen. You just have to email me for the coupon code. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm doing peds because my daughter-in-law just had a baby and my daughter is going to have a baby. So this is peds month for me. And so, because I'm really weak in pediatrics, y'all like really weak. So let's go ahead and do some questions. While supervising a student nurse giving a bath to a two-day-old hospitalized infant, which of the following actions requires that the RN intervene? Select all that apply. All right, when the age is in the question, that makes a difference. The age and the answer rarely makes a difference, but the age in the question does. I pay attention, especially at infant age, because that tells me a lot about development, kind of where they're at and stuff. So I'm paying attention to the fact that it's a two-day-old. All right, A, using the same washcloth to clean both eyes, using plain water, tap water to clean the infant's eyes, cleaning the eyes from the inner to the outer canthus, clean the neonates, eyes last, use a cotton-tipped applicator to clean the nose and the ears, using water warm to between 100 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit, scrubbing the skin to remove the vernix caseosa, using alcohol on the umbilical cord to promote drying. All right, I always read the question and then I read the answers and then I read the question again in case I missed anything. While supervising a student nurse giving a bath to a two day old hospitalized infant, which of the following actions requires that the RN intervene. That means the student nurse is doing something wrong. So I'm looking for the wrong things for two day old. All right, I turn, when I do SATA, I turn every answer into a true false question and relate it back to the question itself. Never relate answers to each other. Using the same washcloth to clean both eyes for a two-day-old infant. Not for a two-day-old infant. You know, if they were a six-month-old child, I'd, I'd be okay with that. But not a two-day-old infant. We don't want to spread anything around. Um, and so we need to do use a different washcloth for each eye for two-day-old. So that's wrong. Using plain tap water to clean the infant's eyes. That's actually okay. I don't want to use soap because I don't want to get soap in the baby's eyes. I don't need to use sterile water or anything like that. So plain tap water is fine as long as I use a different washcloth for each eye. Cleaning the eyes from the inner to the outer canthus. That's correct. That's the way you're supposed to clean the eyes anyway. Adult, doesn't matter. Child, infant, adult, you clean the eyes from the inner to the outer canthus. Clean the neonate's eyes last. I assume that means last thing of the bath. So you're doing the bath and you clean clean the eyes last. So that's not right at all. Like even for an adult, that's not right. You don't, you don't wash the face last, right? You do that first. So I'm definitely not doing the cleaning the neonates eyes last. Using a cotton tipped applicator to clean the nose and the ears for a two day old. Absolutely not. I'm not sticking anything in the nose and the ears of a two day old. Absolutely not. Not a good idea. Doesn't even make sense to me. I ain't doing it. Uh, you don't need to stick anything in the nose and the mouth. Okay, using water warmed between 100 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So we don't want the two-day-old to get cold. So we, we don't want it to be cold, but we don't want it to be too hot either. And 100 to 105 is a good range. Um, you know, if it said 100 to 101, I would be like, what? You can't be that specific. But 100 to 105, that's warm, but not too hot. So I like that. I like that number. So that's good. Scrubbing the skin to remove the vernus caseosa. I don't like the word scrubbing for a two-day-old. You can scrub skin uh, for other ages, but not a two-day-old. You can, they're so fragile. I'm not scrubbing anything on a, on a baby, no. Using alcohol on the umbilical cord to promote drying for a two-day-old. No, we don't use alcohol anymore. Soap and water is fine. Uh, we don't um, use alcohol and you don't want to cover it with the diaper either. So you have to fold the diaper down if they still have the umbilical cord there. So the wrong answers were using the same washcloth, cleaning the neonate's eyes last, using cotton tipped applicator, to clean the nose and the ears, scrubbing the skin. Don't do that. Using alcohol in the umbilical cord to promote dry. And we don't do that anymore. All right. Next question. Which of the following statements indicates that the new mother 
needs further teaching as it relates to breast care and breast feeding. New mother, new mother as it relates to breast care and breastfeeding. I will clean my breast with plain tap water before each feeding. The goal is for my child to feed for 20 minutes at each side. I will always feed my child starting with the right breast and finishing with the left breast. I can refrigerate breast milk for one week before it needs to be discarded. I can freeze breast milk for six months. What's the difference? Oh, refrigerate it for a week or freeze it for six months. Okay. I will not restart oral birth control pills until I am done breastfeeding since this will prevent me from getting pregnant. It's a weird, weird. I assume that means the breastfeeding will prevent them from getting pregnant. So she's not going to start birth control pills until she's done breastfeeding. That's weird wording. I will have my husband feed our child formula at night so I can get a full night's sleep. All right, which of the following statements indicate that the new mother needs further teaching? So I'm looking for the false statements, false, further teaching, false. I will clean my breasts with plain tap water before each feeding. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know that I would necessarily teach them that, but it doesn't need further teaching. If she wants to clean her breasts with plain tap water, have at it, have at it, no problem, no problem at all. The goal is for my child to feed for 20 minutes at each side. Okay, if you don't know how long it is 20 minutes on each side, that's the correct time. That's the goal. It doesn't say I have to, but it says the goal is, and that's correct. That's the goal, 20 minutes on each side. I will always feed my child starting with the right breast and finishing with the left, left breast. That is not true, actually. So she wants to start with the side she finished on the last time. So if she does right, left the next time she does left right and the next time she does right left and the next time she does left right and that's probably so that maybe the baby eats more at the beginning uh so she can try to even those things out i guess so c is false d i can refrigerate breast milk for one week before it needs to be discarded that is false it's 24 hours. And I don't know why it's such a short period of time. I'm sure somebody did some, some studies on it and they decided it wasn't any good after 24 hours, but it's actually one day, not one week. I can freeze breast milk for six months. That is true. They can freeze breast milk for six months. That is true. I will not restart oral birth control pills until I'm done breastfeeding since this will prevent me from getting pregnant. All right. Um, Oral birth control pills don't hurt the baby. So she can be on oral birth control pills while she's breastfeeding, but it can reduce the amount of breast milk that's produced. So we usually recommend six weeks. Don't start on oral birth control pills for six weeks so that it doesn't hamper breast milk production. And if she's talking about breastfeeding, preventing her from getting pregnant, that's not really true. It's a really, it's a really iffy proposition that just because you're breastfeeding, you're not going to get pregnant. That's like super iffy proposition. So we usually say wait six weeks to start back on oral uh, birth control pills. And what I mean by that is hormonal birth control pills. And if they don't want to get pregnant, you know, if they've resumed sexual activity and they don't want to get pregnant, they need to use some other method like barrier method condom, something like that for the first six weeks. Gee, I will have my husband feed our child formula at night so I can get a full night's sleep. Okay. I'm not teaching right now. I'm not teaching you how to be a nurse. I'm teaching you how to pass the test. So I'm not telling you that's wrong. Like if you fed your child formula at night, y'all, I'm not telling you, I'm, I'm not, no judgment here, no judgment here, but never tell the, never tell the NCLEX that you're going to use formula. Okay. The only way it's okay to tell the NCLEX it, that you'll use formula is if there's no breast milk to be had. Like if you've adopted the child or if there's something going on, maybe mom's not producing any breast milk or something like that, then you can use formula. But other than that, never tell the NCLEX that you're going to breastfeed. I'm sorry. Never tell the NCLEX that you're going to formula feed just for convenience sake or sleeping or something. They're going to go, well, the research shows that breastfeeding is the best. So that's why I'm saying that. Okay. So we have to, we have to teach her about feeding. Uh, we have to teach her how long she can refrigerate her breast milk. We can uh, educate her about when she can restart birth control pills and that she can refrigerate her own breast milk. So her husband can feed the baby at night if she wants to sleep. 
not formula. As part of the delivery of the baby, the nurse must take the following actions. Place them in the proper order. Suction the nose. Place a name band on the newborn. Suction the mouth. Check for a cord around the neck and deliver the baby. As part of the delivery of the baby, the nurse must take the following action. So I guess this is saying, are you going to check for a cord around the neck before you deliver the baby? I hope not. I hope we're going to deliver the baby first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> deliver deliver the baby. Now, what do you do next? Of all, you suction or do you check for a cord around the neck? Okay. You check for a cord around the neck, y'all. Um, that's the second thing you do. And then you suction the mouth. It's alphabetical order, M-N-O, right? M-N. So you suction the mouth, and then you suction the nose, and then you place a name band on the newborn. So that's the order. So if you get, you know, if they get, you get a question like, what should you do first? And one of the options is suction the mouth and the nose, and one of the other options is uh, um, give the baby a bath. Or, or dry the baby off, dry the baby, not give him a bath, dry him off. Do I suction first or do I dry him off first? You suction first. Well, how about uh, put a name band on them or weigh them, name band, before you weigh them? Do you see what I'm saying? So all these things have to be done before you do anything else. And it's in this order. All right, next question. A five-day-old newborn five-day-old newborn, comes to the clinic for her first well-child visit. Upon delivery, the child weighed 3,500 grams. Oh, I hate, that. who knows the difference between grams? And she now weighs 3,215 grams. Which of the following would be the nurse's best response? She's losing weight. Are you feeding her every time she's hungry? Two, she's lost weight, but this is expected in the first few days of life. Three, she has lost a dangerous amount of weight. We will need to admit her to the hospital for testing and fluids. Four, she is losing weight. You'll need to supplement your breast milk with formula. All right, so four is out because I'm never going to tell the NCLEX that I'm going to do anything with formula. So the question is, uh, okay, so I would say for me, one is out because I'm not, are you feeding her every time she's hungry? I mean, that doesn't seem like a therapeutic statement. Like if I think she's lost too much weight, that's not the question I would ask her. I'd probably say, can you describe your feeding schedule to me? Or I might say, are you having any difficulty feeding? I wouldn't, are you feeding every time she's hungry? That's, that's like a yes or no question. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like one. I don't like four. So now either she's lost a dangerous amount of weight or she's, it's expected. So 3,500. So the rule is they can lose, they, you would expect them to lose up to 10% of their body weight in the first few days, 10% of their body weight. So what's 10% of 3,500? Well, 10% is 350. So what's 3,500? I, I can't do math in my head. I'm sorry. Oh, and I put my, my calculator somewhere. 3,500 minus 350 is 3,150. Okay, 3150. So 10% would take her down to 3150 and she's 3215. So that's actually normal. This is expected. So she's lost weight, but this is expected in the first few days of life. That's the correct answer. All right. The parent of a 10 month old infant, 10 months old, brings him to the clinic for a well child visit. Which of the following assessment findings will the RN make sure to report to the physician? His posterior fontanelle is not yet closed. He is standing only with assistance. Standing, he's standing, but only with assistance. He is not yet crawling. His anterior fontanelle is not yet closed. So the anterior fontanelle is in the front, posterior fontanelle. Standing with his assistance, the parent of a 10 month old infant brings him to the clinic for a well child visit, which is the following assessment findings with the RN make sure to report to the physician. So we only report unexpected things. So we can only report anything that's unexpected. So do we expect his posterior fontanelle to be closed? The posterior fontanelle closes between two and three months old, and he's 10 months old. So that is unexpected. 
He's standing only with assistance. That's okay. Um, I mean, they, I mean, every child is so different. I mean, that's totally fine. Like, so the order is they hold their head up and then they roll and then they sit and then they stand and then they walk. So, and walking sometimes isn't until 12 to 14 months, depending. I mean, some ch children are, are early, but 12 to 14 months is, is walking. So 10 months old, he's standing with assistance. That's totally fine. He's not yet crawling. Okay. Crawling is not a developmental milestone because some kids never crawl. So if he's not crawling, but he's standing, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. His anterior, the front anterior fontanelle is not yet closed. Well, the anterior fontanelle is the big one. That doesn't close until like 12 to 18 months. So that's okay. He's 10 months old. So I'm okay that his anterior fontanelle is not closed. I'm okay that he's not crawling. I'm okay that he's standing only with assistance. I'm not okay that his posterior fontanelle is not yet closed. Okay. So one of the rules we teach in clinic reviews is um, when it comes to growth and development, and and this is this is a rule that you have to use with a little bit of caution. But um, the rule is, if you're not sure, give the child more time. If you're not sure, give the child more time. So if you're like, well, should he be standing? I mean, should he be standing without assistance? Well, if you're not sure, then give him more time. So I'm okay with that. It's fine. All right. <clears throat> The rapid assessment immediately the rapid assessment immediately after delivery provides the following information. Heart rate's 140. Crying initiated when the mouth and nose were suctioned. Yep, that would initiate crying with me too. Moves all their extremities and pink body with cyanotic extremities. What is their APGAR score? Okay, so the heart rate is fine. Uh, I'm glad they were started crying when they were suction. That's what they should do. They move all their extremities. That's normal. The pink body with cyanotic extremities. The only thing I'm not okay with is cyanotic extremities. So one is out because the higher the number, the better. So one and five are out. So between nine and 10, well, I'm not comfortable giving them a 10 because they're cyanotic. And I know five is too low. Five is way too low. So it's either a nine or a 10. And I'm not okay with a 10 because they have cyanotic extremities. So I'm going to give them a nine. And that's the correct answer. And in case you don't remember, APGAR, there's five things. But uh, reflex irritability, so respiratory effort, vigorously crying is kind of the ideal. Reflex irritability is when they cry when you suction out their nose. Well, it's when they cry when you stick something up their nose. But it's, it's done when you put the suction up their nose. So if you put the suction up their nose and all they do is grimace, that's a one. But if they cry when you do that, that's a two. And so the, everything was fine except, um, the color, they had some blue extremities. So that's, and that's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. It just gives them a nine. So that's good. All right. Well, I hope this helped. Uh, I am going to be doing peds, a few different peds this time. So I hope it's all good. All right. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later.